So, welcome back to my channel guys, and uh, today, as the title suggests, we're going to be painting a horse, or a couple horses, or two horses, I'll be showing them to you in a minute. I'm doing this one because a lot of people on the Facebook group ask how to paint horses, um, and whereas this is not the definitive way to paint a horse, this is the way I prefer to paint them. Um, they look fantastic afterwards, and yeah. So... We'll be, I'll be back when we're back over at the table. So, here we are guys, we're at the table, and today we've got these two horses. Yeah. So, this one is actually two bits that aren't on the same spur together, because they do say that you can make four horses. I will probably, because this is actually a really dynamic pose, when you put these two together, it's basically the left half of the right half of this side and the left half of the other horse, which looks really dynamic when you put them together like that. So, I will probably one day convert one so it's sort of like that, but that's for it. That's for another video. Today I'm going to be painting horses. I'm going to be trying to incorporate a few techniques I've not mastered because I am far, far from a master of painting. One day I might get a master of painting on this channel. I very much doubt that, but one day. Until then, I'm going to stick with what I know and I'm going to paint these two horses, both different colours. The first one I'm going to do with Morn Van Brown. It's my favourite brown colour, you've probably learnt that already. And the second one, I'm going to paint in Celeste Grey. I love a grey horse, however this grey actually comes out, if I'm right, a little whiter. So I've got my paints, got two paint brushes because I will be in between camera takes painting the rest I've got as well. I've got another four horses to paint. So, Let's get started. I'm just gonna throw the paint all over the horse, not count uh, all over the skin of the horse, not counting the seat, the saddle, the hair. I'm gonna try and avoid all that. I won't be able to avoid that on the face of the horse, or the head of the horse, I should say. And I'm not worrying too much about how much paint I put on the horse because I literally want to get it in all the nooks and crannies in the entirety of the horse, underneath the horse as well. <laughs> Trying to not get it over bits that I don't have to go over again later. But at the same time, I'm trying not to miss bits. As you can see, I've not got the steadiest hand in the world. Just make sure I get all the underbelly.
Okay, didn't think I'd go over that hoof. Yeah. I've been on too much. I'm not worried about going too much over this bit because I will be going back over it later. Okay, so with that horse done, I'm next going to dip into the ocean grain. I am using two different paintbrushes here, don't worry. Apply this all over this lovely horse. Okay then, so now that those have dried, we are going to come and do the blankets under the saddles. I've got two colours that I keep doing mine, and I'm going to sort of keep that going. So, the first one I'll be doing will be corn red. Lovely nice red colour. And the second one is will be done in McRae blue. I've already given these a nice little shake, although... My McCraig blue is losing, it has lost its bit that holds it open. So I'll probably start with that one. I'm literally just going to be doing this little blanket. I'm not going to worry about too much again about getting it on the saddle. 
because I can always come back and redo the saddle with the black. But I, and I'm screwing that up there. I am going to make sure I get it all over, well, I'm going to try and make sure I don't get it all over the horse. As it looks like, I definitely need to get rid of this brush soon. Put the least amount of paint on this brush as possible. There we go, once I'm happy with that, let's move on to the red. There we go, so that's them done, I'm definitely going to have to come behind on the red one and redo some of the the horse's uh, skin, fur, whatever. Uh, only a little bit of touch up on the brown one, but I'm going to wait that those dry, do me other four horses off camera and come back to you with the next bit. Okay then, so now that that's dried, we are next going to come in and we're going to do the detail around the face, so the reins, the the neck piece, and the front of the, uh, the the plate on the face, and we're going to come in and do that with some rhino oxide. So this I'm going to be very careful with because I don't want to be redoing any of this.
And there we go. And so I'm confident I got all that. Sorry, I just had That was worst steady hand. They look mostly good now, um, so yeah, gonna let them dry and then come back with the final parts. Okay then guys, so I've just tidied up the skin tones of the two horses off camera around where I did the, the little bits for the, the saddle and all that. So now I'm going to just do some more on camera, the tidying up, but mostly of the black parts. So I'm gonna tidy up the tail on both, I'm going to tidy up the strap underneath, I'm also going to repaint the saddle to make sure that's fully black, tidy up the mane at the top, just do a quick bit of those to get my bad and black out. Tip of the seat, I'm just making sure that it's fully covered. Tidy up some of these hooves as well. The hooves look all good. Just grab that one more bit there. Okay. Not a lot to grab on this horse, but a little more careful with this horse. I need 
need to get that much under the horse. There we go. Now that the tidying's done, we'll come back with the next part. Okay, so now that that has dried, next stage is going to be using the same colour in two sections, but the first bit we're going to do, so the colour is youth land grey, and something I don't do a lot of, and I probably should do a lot more of, we are going to highlight the muscles. Put that back there. because so, a lot of the horses is their muscles now I am not a pro when it comes to highlighting whatsoever my wife is definitely probably much better than I am highlight the muscle areas not too much I mean, for the most part, I'm not worried about how awful this looks, because this is like the first time I am doing it. And I know I will be going over this with a shade very shortly. Highlight all the, mod all the muscles as best you can. and it really gives them that pop a better. That was terrible. I probably just butchered that horse. So, yeah, this is not a technique I use a lot. Probably go back and watch a few videos. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find quite a few videos around highlighting on YouTube. So take the stage, go watch today's videos, come back, move on to the next stage. Comment down below if you want to see my wife paint a model. That would be fun. I know she wants to paint one, it's just the right one. For the most part that's as far as far in as I can get. Alright, so we're going to leave that to dry and come back. Okay, so now that they've dried, we are now going to blend all the colours together with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. So kind of load it up on the brush. There we go, we're just going to load it all up, get it all over it, fill in, make sure it gets all across the entire model because we'll be dry brushing in a minute and we we'll want to make sure that it's all covered.
already looks like the muscles are popping a little less, which is good. Okay, so now that we've given them a nice little wash, we'll let them dry and come back to them. Okay, so we're back, the colours have calmed down nicely. Uh, the highlights look a little better than I thought they would, which is good. So we're going to move on to the next part, which is UV line grey. And we're just going to dry brush that across the hairs. So I've already loaded up a sufficient amount. So just going to dry brush that all across the hairs. Okay, and we are here for the second to last part. The last part I won't actually be doing because I'm actually out of what I need for it. But I will happily have a, I happily have another model that I can use to demonstrate. But yeah, so the next stage is literally basing the model. So for this, I always paint my entire base. With Mourntang Brown. I've done that in completely the wrong order. Although if you've watched any of my videos before, you know this is my go-to basing. With the exception, for some reason, of Goblin Town. For some reason, they stick out and I do them differently. Make sure that's all evenly spread. And because I forgot to put it in. There's of course my more pack brown. I will go over and cover those holes when I do the actual base basing. I usually try and cover them with PVA glue. If that doesn't work, then just a bit of tissue, something to set over it so the base, uh, the basing material will hold. Which for these guys is usually a lovely uh, grass. For Rohan, I tend to do grass. For Harad, I tend to do sand. And as you've seen for Wild Riders, I go with just my lovely Sterling Mud or Battlemire. Now 
there we go. And apart from the basing basing, that is completed. We'll come back in post. So there we have it guys, that's how I painted my horses. Um, I really like how they came out. They do look really good. Still need to work on the highlighting obviously. I will be basing them. They are Rohan horses so I will be basing them in grass. It's an example of what I've done with my grass basing before. If I was doing horses for someone else, so Parad or someone in that region, I would instead use gra uh, sand. But yeah, so really love how they came out. They look really nice. Can't wait to add them to my Rohan force. Eventually, I will repaint all the old horses that I've got painted, as well as the old riders. Um, the old riders don't look terrible, but the horses, they do look quite terrible. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope my hands weren't in the way too much this time. Make sure you hit that like button if you liked it. Comment down below what you want me to paint next. And subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.